does this make well, you feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? pictures? You want, I got sure scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep oh, hanging outside of it. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you bring the fucking threat? army. You're gonna I don't give a out. fuck. How does this make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want, I got sure scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you bring the fucking army. I don't give a fuck. this make you feel? Stalking me. Please, hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes no, and I'll leave you alone. No, zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. Happens, I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened, bless you. But please happened, leave me alone. Just, leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Amen. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way, okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior, and you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Right? Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. What, Sir, please what, leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. This is Cynthia. These are the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. It is June 16, 2022. Shout out to Dennis. It's his birthday. Happy birthday. And uh, thanks for making his life a living hell, Mr. Perry. Um, uh, you know, when you're a kid trying to be in college and just be a kid, and you got some old fart calling you up all the time, I'm going to have your mom put back in jail. You're supposed to be okay with that. I'm going to have your mom false arrested again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force her against her will back to Texas. And we're gonna ruin ruin her life, and you're gonna just be okay with it. Um, you get you're gonna have some problems, bitch. Fucking with children. So look at all the times she had to say, "Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me the fuck alone, leave me the." Charles, listen, I don't like you. You know that. You fucking know that. And you're not even trying to to change. I mean, you're you're fucking. Uh, you know, like I said the other day, if somebody wants clean teeth you can tell they go buy a toothbrush and toothpaste if they if they uh you know you, you're not you have you, our shrink has told the judge that grants investigatory orders look you're under police investigation bitch you fucking act like you don't know that i mean i have your code words muffin man right that's a nickname for one of your you know somebody high up your little food chain or whatever you got uh Code words for the little bullshit tricks you try to play on me of, uh, you know, your gaslighting harassment that you sit on your fat, lazy ass doing, getting a, getting a, you know, go before you go, what, you get some kind of sex thrill out of that? Uh, rumpled steel skin. You guys use daycare words. We're weeble wobbles. Weeples wobbles, but they don't fall down. Well, we're invincible. We're going to get away with this crime forever. Sex trafficking and shit. Um, really? Okay. I have your code words, though. So I don't know what planet you fucking live on. You know, rump, yellow brick road, rumpled steel skin, Hansel and Gretel, um, uh, Ratatouille, all that. Those are your little code, daycare code words y'all use for whatever, you know, bullshit trick you want to play next. How many times did I say leave me alone? She said it six. So um, when somebody responds with leave me alone, okay, she says leave me alone. At that point, the correct response is to leave her alone. That's what any normal guy would do. And then if she's interested, she'll make sure he knows she's interested. She'll get in touch with him somehow. And uh, the thing is, you attract somebody. You don't hold a gun to their head and start demanding that they like you. That's called rape. That's not, ra that's not romantic. It's disgusting. 
It's crime. Stalking is a crime. Peeping is a crime. Hacking is a crime. Hor coercion is a crime. You're trying to force somebody against their will to do something you want that they don't want to do. Or to say something you want said and that they don't want to say. Fuck you. You've been caught. You've been caught. Mr. Perry, you've been caught. Mr. Perry, no one else has those code words. No other victim has those code words. We have those code words. When he pesters Cynthia and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before, like she got our code words. Is she not going to leave Oklahoma? You know why we got the code words? Because you're trying to make me leave Oklahoma. Here's the thing. You're, you guys are a bunch of butt-ins. You're stalking. Otherwise, you don't care where I live. You don't care what I drive. You're doing exactly what I say. And I'll tell you what. People are getting really tired of y'all going, she can't prove it. Really? I think everybody else disagrees. I think everybody else who, who can think past tying their shoe disagrees. So the correct response for a freaky Jason Neal was, uh, you know, to leave her alone. And instead, he's, he starts commenting on her clothes. She, he wasn't asked. No one cares what you think. You weren't asked. Likewise, Mr. Perry, no one cares what you think. We're tired of you talking. We're sick and tired of you. Everybody's tired of you. When you go around causing problems and loss and tragedy, pretty soon people aren't going to like you anymore. Because you make them feel all the negative emotions everybody tries very hard not to feel. You're toxic. So, when you're gone, so are the problems. The problems go with you. So what do you think everybody wants, bitch? They don't want you here. I came here to get away from you. I moved twice. You need to fuck off. You need to fuck off. So we find out you got my tail light out again because you want TPD to pull me over. Y'all have been trying to get TPD to pull me over since forever. I said it about a hundred times in the last podcast. We know you want TPD to pull me over. They, you you want to find out where the car registration is. You want the officer that come that pulls me over to confirm my license confirm the registration and find out where I keep all that. He'll walk around the car and he's going to see the glove compartment open, right? And me pulling shit out of that to give to him, right? Yeah, we know. We know. It's been said over and 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 over. It's been said, you're going to use TPD to harass me, pulling me over. So you had my taillight taken out again. This is the third time you've done that. Get away from my car. First of all, you have to have a key illegally to get my car. We know that the car dealer gives you a key. Every time, every car I have, he gives you a key. That's also illegal because financial records are to be kept confidential. It is illegal to give out that information to anybody. So you got you obtain that information illegally. Then you made illegal entry into my vehicle against my will. You're not supposed to even know where I am. You know exactly what car's mine. You think if you can take my car away from me, the police investigation will end. Did you think? I mean, I don't know what planet y'all live on. So, I mean, I'm not the only victim. I'm not. Every, everybody knows you, you, you've got this huge amount of money you're offering for the actual recordings. No one's calling you. No one's telling you anything, are, are they? You can make all the phone calls you want. It's a need to know. We don't have leaks. We're very careful. Who knows? And who doesn't? There's 12 reporters in, in, in it with us. 12 of them because you talk to reporters you're an elected official yep okay so i mean we know exactly what we're doing mr Perry. we're very good at it we're you're th seeing things happen you've not seen before so if we know that you're an elected official and you're talking to reporters you don't think we've got some helping us we absolutely have some helping us um so this is the number of times i've said leave me alone just in the last you know however what's the date on that this year, I've been saying it every day for seven years. Leave me the fuck alone. Leave me the fuck alone. Leave me the fuck alone. Respond like a grown ass man. You know, your little girl act is just fucking embarrassing. I mean, it's fucking embarrassing. So, Mr. Perry tries to frame me for a murder and he gets caught and he types in my hacked phone, which is also illegal. Um, I want, um, I, I'm sad. You're sad that you got caught trying to frame me for a murder and ruin my life? That made you sad. And then the next question, get this, y'all. Who told on me? Wow. You think I'm going to give you information that would help you make my life horrible? Ruin it? The fact that you would even ask is outrageous and stupid. And my guys sit there and watch you do that. They're recording the whole thing every time you fuck with my phone. You do not know what you stepped in. Clearly, Princess Princey Pants. Get over it like a man and move on. I do not like you. So, back to the toothpaste thing. So, he keeps getting caught. 
Like, we got his code words and shit. No. You know, we want, we know he's been uh, talking to TPD. Pull her over. Just find a way to pull her over. Just get her driver's license away from her. Just get her car away from her. I need to force her against her will into a lie. And she won't do it, so I want you to help me coerce her into a lie. Pull her over, please, TPD, please. Right? Please just get her car. Whiny. That's not how you get a date, and it's not getting you a cover-up. It's getting you told on, isn't it? Never before in your life has your crime been caught this much. And you do the same thing every day that pisses everybody off. Everybody hates you. Everybody's sick of you. So we get more and more and more and more. We're building a criminal case against you, sir. Go ahead and tell everybody how I can't prove it. I want you to hold a press conference today after this podcast, after you hear the podcast, and you announce to the whole world she can't prove it. Say it. Say it to everybody. Tell everybody how you how I can't prove it. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. Say it again one more time. We laugh when you say that. She can't prove it. She can't prove it. She can't prove it. She can't prove it. Say it to the media. Say it to the media. Say it to the world. Tell everybody I can't prove it. I dare you. Do it now. As soon as you hear this, do it. Okay? If you really believe that, say it to the media and say it to the whole world. She can't prove it. Do it. Okay, princess? So the toothpaste thing. You bother me. You never get the date. You always get told on. It's been that way for seven years every fucking day. And I can't prove it. Right? Tell everybody how I can't prove that. You're not stalking. You're not coercing. You're not witness tampering. You're not committing RICO violation after RICO violation after RICO because you're organized crime. We know that. You got sex trafficking thing going. We know that too. When you fucked with me, everything changed. All of a sudden, you got a new normal. And you act like you have no idea. So when you do the same thing every day, one, you never get a date. You're rejected. You're just a rejected failure. In the, for, for, for 12 years, you're a rejected failure. You make my skin crawl. There's nothing there. I don't love you. I don't like you. I want nothing to do with you. I moved twice to get away from you. You're no different to me than that guy is to, Neil is to that girl. She can't stand him. I can't stand you. You harass and badger and harass and badger and bother and bother and bother. So does he. Just strange Joe, both of you. John Hinckley Jr. watches Jodie Foster on TV and thought that was a date, and it wasn't a date, was it? He ended up in the in a in a butterfly net. You're there. You're going next. You're there next. So uh, there's nothing there. Doesn't go both ways. I don't like you. I don't want you. Doesn't go both ways. So then the. So we're going, what, what does he want? Does he want a cover-up or does he want a date? And our shrink says, she flat said, what I like in men is men who are kind and compassionate and considerate and chivalrous and get out and work hard and have something to int interesting to talk about. And, and Charles won't do any of that. He does everything creepy, everything illegal, and everything everybody hates. Day after day after day. And then everything she doesn't like, then he can't figure out why she doesn't like him. So it's not that he wants a date. There's no way. He's, it's, this is not about a date. And it's not even about a cover-up. Because when he messes with her, he gets caught. When he messes with her, we all get pissed off. Everybody starts working really, really hard to end this. And so we get more and more and more and more and more and more. And, we get, and, and he just acts like he has no idea what's happening. What, she, what she's saying. Like, it's, we're talking above his head. And, uh... It's the same thing every day for 12 years. And then we're going, well, we told you so. Well, I told you so. Well, I did say. Well, I told you they were going to do that. I said it beforehand, not after. I don't, I, it's not, I'm not saying it after. It doesn't do any, me any good to say it after. I'm saying it before because you got caught planning it. And now we got malicious aforethought in the state of Oklahoma of an act that you did intending to cause injury. You, to, you did it on purpose. You wanted to cause a problem. But see, here's the thing. When you're gone, everybody knows all that is gone with you. So it's not hard at all to get information, sir, muffin man. Everybody hates you because you're a troublemaker and you cause tragedy and loss. You cause me one loss of my time or my money. You piss my guys off like a motherfucker. They're the ones getting the information from you to me. And they don't call you up and ask your permission. They don't, it's not up to you, muffin man. I got that. Did they call you and ask you? permission? I don't think they did. 
All the times you demand TPD pull me over, I took her tail light, pull her over for her tail light. I gained entry to her car illegally, popped the trunk, and c pulled out the light, put a bro burned out one in. So now you can pull her over. Yeah, okay, we know you got caught because you, you have cops all over you. They're not TPD. You got cops all over you that were before I moved to Oklahoma. They're very good at what they do. Very good at what they do. It's sealed. It's need to know. It's on the down low. You can make all the phone calls you want. You won't find who they are because you kill people. You're deadly. You're dangerous. We're not telling anybody at TPD either because they, they, you know, we're not going to, we can't afford a leak. We don't, we have had a leak in all this time. We're very careful who knows what, right? I'm not told who your leaks are for that reason. We don't have leaks. We're not going to start now. We know you're looking for the actual recordings. Nobody's taking your money. Why we heard is a huge amount of money. Nobody's calling you with, we got the recordings, are they? No, those people want you gone. And all your troublemaking and all your drama and all your problems and all your tragedy and loss gone with you. Everybody hates you. The people that matter hate your guts. So the shrink is like, it's not about a date and it's not about a cover-up because he gets neither one doing what he's doing. I'll tell you what he's getting. He gets a thrill just pissing people off. It's more important to him even than a cover-up. It matters more to him to bother Cynthia and cause a harm to Cynthia and cause a loss to Cynthia than even to have a cover-up. Because the more he gets caught, the more he does it. The more he pesters her, the more he gets rejected, the more he does it. And that does not even make sense. So he, we're not seeing him buy a toothbrush and a toothpaste. He doesn't want clean teeth. He wants dirty teeth. I don't care what he says. If she hates it, he does more of it. If she likes it, he won't do that. So it's not about a date. He's not trying to get her to like him. When you want somebody to like you, you do what they like. You do everything that disgusts me and makes me want to hit you. I, I even said, shit. I'll consider being a Vegas dominatrix if that will allow me to beat the ever-living fuck out of you. And it's legal and I get paid for it. Can't beat a situation like that, can you? And I mean, I'll beat the ever-living fuck out of you. I'll put you in a coma. It'll be like that. I hope that was an accident. I hit him too hard. Maybe. I, I, if I wanted to, I'd put you in a coma. So, uh, I mean, that's how, that's how angry everybody is. Nobody's going where you are. You're coming where I am. Do you understand? Nobody goes, so if you come near me, I will beat the hell out of you. You'll, you'll be in a coma. I'm not going to wait to see if you got a syringe on you or a chloroform rag or a gun or any weapon at all. I'll beat the fuck out of you. I hate you that much, and I'm not going to let you hurt me anymore. You're not going to syringe me. You're not going to chloroform me. You're not going to do shit to me. You'll get beat up. And I've got enough anger and resentment and animosity at everything you've cost me. That would even be added to the, you know, that you've got to know the emotions are there. That if you get near me, it won't, it will not be a hug fest, sir. You get that out of your head, it is not going to happen. It is absolutely not going to happen. You took my son, you've taken four, five, six homes, you're trying to take my car, you're trying to, you put me in jail illegally. Those claims got dismissed, you've been trying to do it ever, again ever since. You think I want to date with you? You're a motherfucking monster. I don't want to date with you. You're getting told on. And told on, and told on, and told on, and told on, and told on. And how many times do I have to repeat myself, leave me the fuck alone? So they want me out of Oklahoma so badly. This is so bizarre. I guess uh, what they did is they'll, they'll fuck with my Uber Eats apps and DoorDash and all that. Hang on. All right, so you see that? Can't make any money on that. They'll jam it up and it won't work at all. They know, I, we know they have a hookup at Chipotle and uh, Wingstop and uh, what else? Chick-fil-A. Um, I don't take those orders. I really don't. Once in a while, I'll take a Chick-fil-A. It depends. It just depends on the situation. Otherwise, I don't take them from those three restaurants or Abuelos. Abuelos is based in Lubbock where you are. So those places, I don't take orders from them. So I'll either get these nonstop orders from one of those four places or this like this. You can't make any money on that. You're going to spend more in time and gas than you make. That's bullshit right there. That's their guy. Remember they're into trucking. Terry Wagner and uh, David Robertson are truckers. Road construction and shit. So um, they can haul women across the Canadian border who, you know, sex traffic them. 
They wanted to me in one of those trucks. Is that why you were up in uh, B uh, Montana, Mr. Perry, in 2000, um, what was it, 11 or 12, September 15th? Yeah, and uh, where you, you got, you got, then you said you killed a woman, Mary Beth, sometimes goes by Beth, dumped her at a lake just outside Billings, that one. Is that it? So they, that's why they got this truck, whatever it is. Anyways, um, so you can't make money on these. When my guys see these come through, they're pissed. Oh my God, they hit the roof. I'm not sure they're people you want to piss off, sir. First of all, get out of my phone, get out of my apps, get the fuck out of my life, get out of it. Or they'll do it for you. And when you're told on, that's what's, that they're doing it for you. You're being stopped. You can call everywhere you want. Please stop stopping my crime. Would you please stop stopping my crime? And he's typing in my phone. Who's told? Who is it? Who told? Just say who it is. I'm not going to help you be horrible to me. I'm not going to help you ruin my life. Your delusion is squirting out your ears when you ask those kind of questions. What in the fuck kind of stupid would think that I'm going to help you ruin my life? You are off your nut. So they'll do this on purpose to keep me broke. That was duly noted, Mr. Perry. Somebody's starting to look at my appeals. How come every single one of these appeals, appeals, he fucks it up? You can tell. Because she can't finish anything. She can't see it through. He's taking all her money. Yeah, I've been saying. I, I did say. So go ahead and hold the press conference how I can't prove anything. Go ahead, do it. You're a dumb son of a bitch. It's so easy, it's not even fair. You're seeing things happen you've not seen before. Dumb fuck. He's a. Oh, I. I'm trying. I just tried to frame you for a murder, and you caught me. Now I'm sad. Who told? He actually typed that in my phone. I was like, Oh my god. Who the fuck does that? Who the fuck asked that? What the hell's wrong with you? You're sad that your murder frame up didn't work. You're about to ruin my life, and my guys caught you again. Cause you do shit like that. Boy, they get busy working when you do shit like that making our girl broke and uh we don't like that our girl's smart she shouldn't be broke so let's find out what is he doing yep so they have um then i'll have to call my ex-husband okay here's the here's what he said about my ex-husband because a uh, time or two they have i told you first of all i told you we know you're call calling my family we know you use them to ask questions that you want to know because you know here's the thing i've known my family all my life I love them. I know exactly what kind of questions they would normally ask and what you're telling them to ask. We're not stupid. I'm not born yesterday. So, I mean, we were close. Our family's been very, very close all my life. I would never have taken you around my family in a million years. I love my family. I would never have introduced you to them. You did that all by yourself, against my will, after I've told you and told you and told you and told you the same thing she said. Stay the fuck away from my family. Stay the fuck away from my family, you sick son of a bitch. We've known each other all since I'm 52. I've known my family for 52 years, dumb fuck. I know exactly what kind of questions they're going to ask normally and what questions you told them to ask because it's bizarre and they're not bizarre. It's cruel and hateful and you're not cruel and they're not cruel and hateful. My family's some of the kindest people you could ever meet. So if they're being asshole, you told them to do it. You told them to be asshole or they wouldn't be. If they're asking me strange questions that I know they wouldn't ask, and I, you, Charles has been over, that's their script. They're reading the script he gave them. And then when I find out beforehand, you think they 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 uh, they told. He Then he types in my phone, is it your dad? What's the leaks? Again, I'm not told that, and I'm repeating myself, Alzheimer's. Write it down. When you hold your press conference and announce to the world, she can't prove anything. She can't prove anything. Right, make make sure that you uh, that you let them know that you say for the world that uh, I'm not told who the leaks are, because I've said that over and over and over and over and over and over, and ask for any information the public might have that might assist you in finding who your leaks are, and who has the actual recordings, and see if they'll uh, see if you get some phone calls. Yep. So, anyways, um. So my ex-husband said something to me that I was like, oh my God, I'll give you money if if this, this, the X, Y, Z. And I was like, oh my God, wow. My guy hit the roof. We're like, that's not his normal um, way. That's not his normal way. 
So he goes, I'm going to tell you something. I have an ex-wife. My kids are grown. Once in a while, she needs my help. I check on her every once in a while. And uh, once in a while, she needs my help, and I'll help her. And I know I'm probably not going to get it back. And, uh, it, you know, I, I don't care. Here's the thing. My wife, my new wife, wouldn't have it any other way. That's why she married me, because I'm given like that. That's, that woman raised my children, and my children are great kids. And so the least I can do, because she raised my children by herself, I'd help, I'd get in there and help, but she did a lot on her own. The least I can do is when she needs help, I'll step up and help her like a good man. And I'm not asking anything from her. And so for your husband, your ex-husband, to say something like that, I, I'd, I'd like to hit him. I can't believe he said that. I said, I don't, think he, that he, I don't think he did that by himself. I think they told him to do it. I think they're telling him to do that. And he said, well, we'll check. I can check. I can find out. But um, I think that your butting into my family relationships have worked against you. If you're asking if my dad's leaking, I'm not told who the leaks are. I don't care. I really don't care. I just want you gone. We all just want you gone. You're, you, you come up here and you make pro. I came here to get away from you and to not have any fight. And you come up here and you pick a fight when you cause a loss. David, you get into my car and you take a tail light out and then call TBD and ask them to pull me over. You just picked a fight with me. I don't know you. I don't care who you are. I don't. I really don't. I'm not picking a fight with you, sir. You're picking one with me. You're not winning this one. If we're quoting you, you know, Muffin Man and shit, uh, you, do you think you're winning this one, sir? If we're finding out intel no one else has, no one else has that. So I, I, I'd like to know what planet it is that you live on if you think you're winning this one. And do go ahead, Mr. Perry, and hold that press conference and make sure the whole world knows I can't prove a fucking thing. Tell everybody that. I would like you very much to, to tell everybody she can't prove it. Do it. Isaria, do that, please, today. Today. Make sure everybody on the planet knows you believe I can't prove it. She can't prove it prove it say it to the world say it to everybody okay you like getting in front of the media in front of the camera and you're a drama queen so do your drama queen dance and say to the whole world in a press conference she can't prove it do it now get on the record put take a stand you want to make the claim take the stand take the stand in front of the whole world on camera and say that okay she can't prove it. Do it. It's very important to me that you do that. Since you're going to make that claim, it's very important to me that everybody hear you make that claim. Okay? You and David. You and David and Mark Warman. Go out there and do that. Make the claim where everyone can hear you make the claim. She can't prove it. I mean, I can't... I, I, I promise I'll watch that one. So they do, they do this kind of shit. And then I'm broke, and they do it on purpose, and then I have to call my ex-husband, and then they're giving him money to give to me. So in this way, they're controlling my income. And they've done it for a long time, and everybody knows it. When I start having money problems, my guys have worked with me for a long time. They know what I can do. They know what my, my talents. They know my weaknesses. That's why there's some information they don't tell me. You get mad enough, you'll spill it, so we're just not going to tell you. We, they know exactly what I can do and what I can't what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are. And so, because they've known me all my, um, almost all my adult life. Some, some of them have. So, Mr. Perry, they know exactly what part you're doing. Why, why would she have a money problem? Our girl shouldn't have money problems. He's doing something. Let's find out what it is. They got a guy that went to the strip clubs and found out what you were doing. They got a guy that does, does door dashing and he found out what you're doing. What he makes and what I'm making is not the same. And it should be. It should be. What I made at first was 14 to 18 bucks an hour. Gas went up a little bit, but so did incentives. So these driver companies are uh, about to lose everybody, right? If you got a bunch of people driving your food around, this is their company. That's how they make money. They're not cooking the food. We're picking food up from a restaurant. So the restaurant's going to make the money either way, whether they got food delivery or not. People are going to go to a restaurant and get the food themselves if they have to. They won't, or, or just find, or get up and get dressed and go eat. So um, I'll th let me tell you something. There's a couple of times when I get an order of drinks 
Oh, I, I, I'd like to throw the drinks at these people. You want me to fucking, you're getting somebody to fucking get, go get your tea and bring it to your house? Get off your lazy ass and go get your own fucking tea. I mean, what is that? I like, I don't mind, you know, I, I'll take orders that are like food. You know, somebody, I'm, I've been there, I'm busy or something and I don't have time to cook and I don't have time to do anything. And I'll order food out. It's rare, but I'll do that. But you gotta, you gotta order, use, you know, Uber Eats or DoorDash to order your fucking tea from Cha Bubble Tea or, or something. Oh, well, I'd like to slap you. Get off your ass and go fucking get your own drink. I mean, who the hell does that? You're paying more for the delivery than you are for the fucking tea. Uh, who, who the hell is that stupid uh, with your money? Anyways, I, I just, that's my rant on that for the day. So, um, it's like it's worth it if you're buying a meal. And you're having it delivered because it costs money to have it delivered. Um, something I got, uh, I, I got it. I, I wanted to see what happens with uh, with one of the companies that does the deliver that I work for. I want to see what is it like to be a customer. I want to see exactly how this whole thing works. So um, if you're on the customer end of it, because we I know what it is on the delivery end of it. I want to see what the customers are experiencing. So I order something that normally costs me 15 bucks if I go if I go in and eat it, or if I go in and pick it up, I'll call in a takeout order and I'll go in and pick it up. It, it cost me 15 When I get it from the delivery company, it's $30 because it's the delivery fee plus a tax plus a tip. So I have to, I have to it's double. So you fucking, can, you know, you got your $5 tea and you need to pay, you know, 15 So I bring it to, you know, you're just lazy. You're just careless with your money and you're fucking lazy. And some of these places that I'm taking shit like that to, it's ghetto. These people don't have that kind of money. I mean, they don't have it. Fifteen dollars for a little cup of tea. I'm just like, dear Jesus, what is the world coming to? You got people that lazy. Get off your ass and you fucking go get your own damn tea. So, um, watch now. I'll get a whole bunch of uh, tea. Tea. Uh, that's what they do. They just like to fuck with me. So watch. If the next time I work, I'll get all these tea orders or drink orders or or you know uh, a milkshake from Baskin Robbins or some bullshit like that. They know I hate that. I just don't, I don't have the patience for. Uh, I just don't have the patience for people that spend their money like that. I don't get it. I don't get why you would do that. <coughs> and uh, the lazy. I think the lazy is what gets at me more than anything. It's not the, uh, it's not the uh, misspending of the money. It's their money. They want to blow it. That's fine. It's just you're just fucking lazy. If you got to use, uh, you know, Uber Eats or DoorDash to bring you your little cup of tea. I, I, I don't even, it's like, I, I don't have any words. Anyways, that's just my personal opinion. So watch. Now they'll send a whole bunch of that to me. That's what they do. And uh, we'll record it, Perry, when you do that. You know, you, you fuck with me. We'd start finding out what you're up to. Um, so, so they give you incentives to offset that because you got, you got companies that are you working with restaurants to deliver the food for the restaurant. So it's a, the only way you make money, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and uh, Grubhub, is taking the food around to everybody, right? They're not making money when it's cooked. That's the restaurant's money. The profit only comes when they're delivering food. Well, the gas prices are going up, and a lot of people are are quit. We're quitting. I gotta find a different job. It doesn't do any good if I'm gonna get paid seven bucks, and it's gonna cost me four to drive to twelve miles, which is actually twenty two, because it's twelve miles there and then twelve miles back to the hot zone to get the next order. So you're talking about twenty two miles right there. So it doesn't. I, I'm not making money. I quit. So they started giving us incentives, but the also the other thing is you have to be wise and and get uh, don't take the order if it's less than a dollar fifty a mile. Don't take it, and if and I won't take it outside the zone, very far. I mean I, I have my limit. It's I think about six seven miles is the farthest I'll go away, because I don't have time. It's taking up my time too. I, you have to you, you can't you can't do it if it's not profitable. You have to be smart in which orders you take and which ones you decline. There's people making eight hundred a week doing this. So, I mean, it can be profitable if you don't have somebody fucking up your life all the time. So, since you are, my guys hired a guy, Perry, to investigate why that is. And they said the clubs where you work are a completely different place when you're not there. Full of money. Full of people. So, he found out you're renting the clubs out. Running off all the people that were coming in with money. And sending your five guys in with your little peanuts and your little canned food. And why doesn't she like me? Mm. You got to wine and dine me first, bitch, and then I'll decide if I like you. But you've done enough damage in my life and other people's lives. There's no way. You're a job, sir. That's it. As many times as you get caught and told on, you can't figure out by now you're a job for me. You should. And I'm smart and I'm very good at what I do. And when I start having money problems, they know you're causing it. It's not my fault. You're causing it. And you want to launder money? by So we bring that comes out. Somebody said it. 
she's she's uh what he was going to do is have Ernest put money on her on her uh, account on her GPay. They called the taxi. They're going to tow her car. They called the taxi and they're asking the guy, "Can you take a debit card?" Cuz what we'll do is we'll give Ernest money and she'll call him and come, "Oh, they took my car." And then he'll say, "Oh, well, I can't, I'm busy. I can't come get you. You're going to have to take a plane ticket. I'll call I'll, I'll buy you a plane ticket." And uh so get a cab. I'll call you a cab. And uh, you'll, you can pay for it with your debit card. And the taxi guy, I guess, said, I don't take debit cards. I have to have a credit card or whatever. So, so they, I mean, that whole thing got caught. That was like, what, mo Sunday night, I guess? Right? Sunday? And then, um, so the guy's like, well, so th that's basically what they've been doing is they'll take all her money. And then she'll call her ex-husband. And then he gives her shit. But then they'll give him money to pay her, to give her. So they're controlling her, her money. They'll decide how much money. What all of that's illegal. That is coercion. We already did this with Terry. It's conduit of coercion. It's different though when it's with when it's my family. It's a whole different thing. It's being treated a whole different way. And uh, I've known my family long enough to know a lot longer than I've known you. I met you in 2010, right? So when my family asks me a question, and it's not a normal question they would ask, but it is a normal question you'd ask. Then we know exactly what you're doing. It's not hard. You you guys are stupid. Criminals are stupid. Low IQ and no self-control. So it's not hard to catch y'all. I, I don't know what's taking so long. I mean, until we came around, we're catching every fucking thing you tried to do to me. And you can't explain that, muffin man. How do we get the code words? How do we have that information? How do we have the thing about, you know, I'm going to tow her car and tell Ernest to give her a plane ticket. Charles already bought the plane ticket, they said. He'd already bought it. He's trying to force me against my will back to Texas. I don't want to go to Texas. I don't want anything to do with you. So our shrink is like, if he liked her, he would do what he like, what she likes, like dinner and a movie. And not, not now, after you've ruined my life. I mean, way back when, if you really wanted a date, uh, I, when you and I talked, I said, I won't be your mistress. If something happens and you and your wife get divorced, let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to be your mistress. At the time, though, please understand, you're, you're a job then. I already knew what you had done and what you were all about. I already knew. I was sent to Lubbock to get get you elected so they could get to you easier. It's harder to go in and pretend they need their taxes done. You can only do that a time or two and you're going to get wise to something's up. What they needed to do, I mean, they can't actually give you their taxes. Then you know what, they, they're, they're cops, right? So what would have to happen is you get elected, Right, Mr. Perry? You get elected. I get. I went three years, and I'm cultivating relationships, and I'm working for the LARW, and I'm getting to know everybody. And then we, then you run for office. You get elected, and boom. All that time, now they go right to you. And you think you're talking to a voter. You think you're talking to somebody who might donate money to your campaign. You think you're talking to some sort of politically interested party, don't you? Nope. Eh, those were undercovers, and you just didn't know. You too, David. You've talked to them face-to-face. -face. You just didn't know who that's what you were talking to. It's, in, it's interesting when people like to brag about their crime, not realizing they're talking to a cop. It's interesting how that turns out. How'd I get those code words, Cut Muffin Man? Yellow Brick Road. Is she not going to take the Yellow Brick Road? We want to get her a bus pass. She can't go back to New Mexico. Why not? Why is it up to you? Why do you think you get a call on that? I just got your code words. I know you said that, and that wasn't up to you. So what makes you think where I live is up to you? We're all, we're all, we're at a loss as to why you fucking think that's up to you. I just know you said that. Get her a bus pass. Get her a plane ticket. Where are we going to put her? Not in New Mexico. Can, maybe we can make her go to Houston. Maybe y'all have all these conversations and they're recorded. And I heard those recordings. And no one called you and says, is it, is it okay if we get that information and then give it to her? It's not up to you. Where I live isn't up to you. My family, leave them the fuck alone. I told you to leave them alone. I would have never introduced you to my family, serial killing nutbag, psychotic freaky Jason, slasher, you know, sex trafficking, organized crime, you know, monster, cop killer. I'm not going to take you around my family. You stay away from my family. Family, it's in your hands. You, you, you have my, you certainly can tell them. I mean, you have my support and everybody helping me. Tell them, get off my property, and don't ever come back here again. And if they threaten you or they cause a problem for you, you need to call me. Look what I'm, look what I'm doing. I'm doing what they've not seen before. I have help. I knew Mike Neely was drugged, and he didn't kill anybody. I said it before. It was on the docket, guys. Well, before it wasn't on the docket until May of 2020. I said it in January and then again in March. 
Nobody calls you and said, can we get that information to give it to Cynthia? Did they? Because it's not up to you. Butt out of my business. Stay away from my family and leave me the fuck alone. And every time you do that, you piss my guys off. They're sitting there watching you. Every penny you cost me, every minute of my time you cost me, when you invade my privacy, when Perry contacts me in any way, or shape, or form at all, I hate it. Get out of my life. Get the fuck out of my life. Get out of it. Leave me alone. Get the fuck out of my life, you sick son of a bitch. It's being done for you every time we find out what you just said. We all know you got to take out a tail light. You got it into my car illegally, took the tail light out, so the TPD will call me, uh, pull me over, and tell you all the information about my car. Are they corrupt? Are they working for you? Sheriff Rowan, he's my bitch. He sends me Johns. I own it. They own, I'm owning them. Everybody at the courthouse. That's my bitch. Yeah, well, if that's the best you can do in your career in law enforcement, I feel for you. I really do. I feel for you. Uh, you got on the wrong side of that. Sometimes at the end of the day, you, you got to explain why the fuck you did what you did. Because somebody else will get in there and do it right. Right up under your nose. And you'll be like, oh, how'd she find out? How'd she know about that? How did she find out? How'd she know? How, how, did she find out again? How's that happening? I heard y'all say that too. So, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I can't keep repeating myself. We're talking over y'all's heads. I mean, you get caught when you fuck with me. There's not a date. You're not getting a date, you sick son of a bitch. You're not getting one. I don't like you. You're, you're a nut job. We all want you in jail. You're a troublemaker. When you're gone, all the troublemaking goes with you. So, when you're told on, that's you being stopped, genius. Doesn't take Stephen Hawkins to figure this out. Why are you so mentally slow? It aggravates me. What does that say? I don't want to be a scandal. All I want is for the bitch to leave me alone. And somebody pointed out the other day, too, uh, even if she was a diehard liberal, far-left Democrat, she still has the right to file a police report against a guy stalking her, vandalizing her car, gaining illegal entry to her vehicle, gaining a, a information to her location illegally and where she lives, entry into her property illegally. Malicious intent is what we establish when we quote you verbatim before you do some pe some shitty thing like fuck with my car. TPD, you want to call me over? Listen, Captain Gimpy, why don't you fucking come see me and next time I go, you know, work, just sit in my car and drive around while I deliver food. And then and then you can find you can look in the glove while you're sitting there. And see if you can find the registration. Call up David. Here here's what the registration says, David. Would you like the VIN number too? Why don't you just do that? Wouldn't that be a lot easier? What does that say? Charles Perry is to have no contact with Cynthia. Um, this is my bond conditions, sir. There's no way your name would be on my bond conditions with an order that you leave me the fuck alone and never ever contact me again. Unless you knew you admitted guilt and agreed to stop. And I'm under duress at this point. In the state of Oklahoma, when I filed a breach of contract, which no judge ruled, is this contract binding to Mr. Perry or not? Because you guys got that dismissed with a phone call. So we didn't get a ruling on that matter. I could file a suit again, couldn't I? Every time you do something to me, that's another count. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. Interference with contracts and commerce with intent to coerce. We're going to starve her into a lie. We're going to starve her where she feels she has no choice but to go back to Texas. You know, this guy... Could, you know, Fabian, had you let that develop, I'd probably been back in Texas voluntarily to go see him. Except you know good and well he won't let me go back to Texas, right? He cares about me. He didn't want you to hurt me. And he knows the second I cross into Texas, uh, step on Texas dirt, you'll hurt me. He knows that. Everyone knows that. You make it very clear you intend to hurt me. You tell everybody who will listen. It's not a secret. Everybody knows. Make sure you put that in your press conference when you tell everybody she can't prove it. Do that. So also explain how your name ended up in my bond conditions with the order to leave her the fuck alone. You have to admit guilt and agree to stop for that to be there. You're an elected official with your name in my bond conditions when you did your false arrest that says leave her alone. 
I sue for breach of contract. They make a phone call. Whole thing's dismissed. Again, it's res judicata. Well, except no judge ever at any point has heard a word I have to say or seen any of my evidence. There's been no, you know, I gave the example of there's a guy who is arrested for mugging. Someone has a picture of it. The prosecutor feels like he's got a, a, a slam dunk case. This man, you can see in this picture clearly, he is grabbing this woman by the arm and grabbing her purse. She looks distraught. He's ta it's a mugging. Only the guy's defense attorney puts the lady up on the stand. And she says, this is not a crime. That young man you have in that photograph is my son. I was going to fall. He grabbed my arm to steady me and he was pulling my purse because it was kind of heavy and it was pulling me down. He's grabbing the purse to, to keep me for, keep it from pulling me down. That's my kid. There's no crime here, sir. You're a whack job. So it's very important that when somebody submits evidence that there's testimony with that evidence so that everybody's clear on material facts that gave rise to the events that, that gave rise to the uh, litigation. So when you sue somebody, I've done three times, Mr. Perry, trying to get you to leave me the fuck alone. You shouldn't have to move twice and sue somebody three times to make them leave you the fuck alone. So, uh, and then the more you bother me, the more you get told on and you keep going at it. Like, you, it goes right over your head. Are we talking over your head? Write it down, Alzheimer's. We're having to repeat ourselves an awful lot. Somebody who's sane, you don't have to say the same thing this many times. So, you have Huntington's disease, I guess. It's making you wacky. Go see a doctor. So, we had, um, we had, uh, we had, uh, a judge needed to rule on whether or not this was a, a uh, contract, an enforceable contract on Mr. Perry. He agreed. It's, his name is in that. You think Mr. Perry would have agreed to have his name say that with a judge saying, I will, I'll, I'll never contact her again in a criminal case if he didn't agree to that? Why, you know, he did. So res judicata means you've got to uh, have a full trial, evidence, testimonies, blah, 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 and the jury rules against you. And you want to just try the whole thing again in a different courtroom. You can't do that. That's res judicata. Well, I've never had all that. In order for it to qualify, you have to have a fair hearing and a fair trial in a court with a jury ruling. And I've never had that, ever. You guys have, have uh, you know, when, see, here's the thing, Perry. Once you're gone, once they arrest you, I can try again, only this time you're not around to buy the judge. You'll have to just do a normal fucking lawsuit. We can't wait for that. Um, after your conviction, I can just try again and get all that shit overturned. Don't you think? So when we get this stuff that you just said, Muffin Man, it's uh, not going to be used at uh, a party for entertainment. It's going to be used to get a conviction in a criminal case. I told you to leave me the fuck alone. I wasn't kidding. I th you guys act like it's options. Your option is you leave me alone, or your other option is they'll do it for you. They already are every time they get information from you to me and don't ask your permission. It's not up to you. It's never, it's never been up to you. The McNamara email, everybody's seen that. That was in 2015, seven, two, seven years ago. He's going to false arrest me and then try to coerce the lie. He's going to false arrest me and Dennis. And then once he got, once I gave this to my ex-husband, my ex-husband was like, not my kid. But you can do it to my ex-wife. He's, yeah, sometimes he's, uh, so we got to get her back to Texas so we can do more to her. Record it. So you're being stopped. Whether you're able to understand and comprehend what's happening or not, it's not my problem. It's not my problem at all. But do hold that press conference and tell them how I can't prove it. Go ahead. Do that. These are the false arrest documents. See, you charged me with filing a false... Oh, that's the motion to dismiss signed by Mr. Powell, who said he didn't know anything about it. <coughs> filing a false police report in retaliation for a public servant doing his job as a senator. Wow, I didn't live in Texas. By law, you got to file a police report if somebody's stalking you. And this was in January. The McNamara email was dated October 29, 2015. He's threatening a false arrest. Then I get, uh, you know, the arsenic poisoning. Are you giving me arsenic? I'm getting sick. Yeah. Let your life fade away. I can't promise this stalking won't end without death and destruction. 
Those guys in Manford are. You know how many times I've told a woman that? Never. It's weirdo. Yeah. Okay. So I file a police report uh, uh, on the 21st of 2016. Boom. Nine days later, I'm in jail in Lubbock. I don't live in Lubbock. I hadn't gotten a call back yet, so no evidence had been collected. I didn't sit down with the video. I, I said in the in the police report, there's video, and there's uh, Texas evidence. Now I didn't want to put my my worry was that the TPD would do exactly what they did instead of handling like the officers in connecting the dots. Say you're supposed to handle stalking victims and stalking complaints. The National Stalker Victims Resource Center produced a training video. It's called connecting the dots. Here's what you do when a stalking complaint comes in. You really need a threat management unit like they have with LAPD to handle stalking because stalking results in death so many times. So we, ha I, I'm like, there's, there's evidence here. Well, you're supposed to be able to sit down with a detective and go over the text. Look, he sent me this text. He said he gave me arsenic. At that point, detective, whoever says, well, we better pull your blood. Let's pull your blood. Let's get a forensic doc, uh, guy in here to take your blood so we can find out what all's in it and how much is in it and what's, you know. So uh, that didn't happen. And if Mr. Perry wasn't poisoning me, they would have made sure I had that test. But he knew he was poisoning me, and he just didn't want anybody to know. So he obstructed justice and made sure I didn't get a test. Because when you impede a police investigation in another state, you got a problem. It's illegal. Obstruction of justice, destruction of evidence, perjury. He went into court and said, there's a political vendetta, and that political vendetta led to a false police report. Okay, but there's no emails or texts about anything political ever. I didn't, you know, I, why would I do that? I, I wanted you elected so we, you cops could get to you without you knowing that's who you were talking to. So I don't have a political vendetta. There's no arguments, emails, texts, nothing. Everybody knows I'm very vocal. Uh, you piss me off, you're going to hear about it. So, um, I mean, I'll say something. You can't change something you don't talk about. I've been in life, I've been in heavy duty lobby world all my life, so I talk about stuff. And if you piss me off politically, I'm gonna tell you, you piss me off. Ask John Porter; he'll tell you you're you're very vocal, Ms. Ortiz. You think so? If I'm vocal with John Porter, why wouldn't I be vocal with new guy Charles Barry, who just had crawled out from our, under a rock to run for office, uh, and uh, other than that, had no pull. He didn't have any rapport with anybody. He's a new guy. I'm gonna call somebody I'd already been working with if it was political. I'm not going to call you. Yeah, I didn't live in your district. I didn't do legislation reform in Texas. I did federal. So there's no political vendetta. You had to have proof of that for there to be probable cause. And you also had to have proof of a false police report for there to be probable cause for that judge to have even signed that. So why did he sign that? Did you lie? Did he just trust you? If you're a judge, you don't have probable cause that there's a crime being committed. What the fuck are you doing think signing something like that? Now your reputation is on that. Your name's on that, bitch. So we got this. January 29. It's just a few days after I filed the report. They hadn't seen my text. They didn't pull my blood. They hadn't seen the video surveillance from my workplace. This is what they did to me while I was in there working. I'm just trying to go to work. Minding my own business. Trying to take care of my kid. They're coming where I am. In the fourth state of Oklahoma. Trying to kill me. You don't think that's going to make work a little bit scary? It did. It does. And how dare you cause intentional duress like that? You know, it's when, well, on the 15th, that's when they call. If you want to pursue charges, we got to have the evidence. I'm already sitting in jail in Lubbock. You obstructed a... Oh, but Tulsa police gave you the, the report, and they shouldn't have. I, I still haven't asked the name of the guy that did that, and I could have. I could have gone down there and just pounded my fist. Look what you did to me. I lost my house. My reputation is fucked. You've ruined my life. Give me your name. I want to talk to the guy who did this to me. I haven't done that. But sometimes you just, you know, in the process of picking your battle, sometimes you give it to God and you let God do it. He'll deal with it. He is uh, the God of justice and the truth. Believe me, he'll deal with it if he hadn't already. So that's where those bond conditions came from. Because immediately they come to me. We need you to lie. No, I'm not going to lie. You're shitting me with that, right? I just lost my house. My son and I enjoyed that house. My son was captain of the tennis team in Sepulpa. And uh, our house was like literally one house from the courts. So he he lived. It was like those it was like those courts were his courts. <laughs> it was like his backyard courts. He would just walk right over. And he, he, he would. He was a very motivated tennis player. He'd get up uh, on, uh, on Saturday 
and and go run. I mean, here's this kid on Saturday. He can do whatever he wants. He can play video games. He can do whatever he wants. That child would get up at 10 o'clock on a Saturday, all, all, not every Saturday, but most Saturdays, and uh, walk down to the courts and start playing with his friends. He loved it. And you blew his life up in one second over a lie. And then had the nerve to me to come to me and say, they want you to let them save face. Will you lie? And I was like, I almost fell out of my chair. You're shitting me with that, right? Well, I, no. Hell no. And uh, he, 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 my attorney says, well, um, I mean, I had to tell you what they, what they told me to say. Tell them I said fuck no. The uh, only thing I'll do if they prom if Charles Perry never contacts or bothers me again, ever. Not in any way, shape, or form. He stayed the fuck out of my life, and I never have to, I don't even want to hear his name again. I'll just stay quiet. So that's what le that was what came to that. Man, my feet didn't hit, hurt, hit Oklahoma dirt when I'd come home in April, and he started going right back at it immediately, harassing and harassing and harassing and harassing and harassing. Because while I was there for that one, they planned a second one. We're going to take send her home and harass the fuck out of her. And when she talks about it, we'll say she's harassing us. We'll lie again in court. Because to get a, per a false arrest, you got to commit perjury. you got to lie. So how many times have you been caught doing that, sir? Your whole life is a lie. But the thing is, is once you went at me, everything changed. And yeah, like we're talking over your head. When you fuck with me, Muffin Man, we, you get caught. You get caught every fucking time. So you want to have a TPD call me over, pull me over, just have Gippy ride with me. Just have him ride with me one night when I'm delivering food. And he can just dig all up in that glove compartment while he sits there driving around. Okay? If that's the way you want to do it, just do it right. Do it, do, don't do it right or don't do it at all. Let him just sit there right next to me all night long. Dig up in that wherever he wants to dig. All right? You know, and now we're going to wait for you to have that press conference where you tell everybody, you know, she can't prove it. We're waiting for that. We're, we're just waiting, okay? Do what you do, princess. But you're not going to get a date with me. And please understand that all you do is cause tragedy and loss and make trouble and invade privacy and butt into things that aren't your business. And this time, when you do that, you get caught. You're not going to get a date with me, ever. I can't stand you. No one can. And when you're gone, every time you get to told on, that's you being stopped, sir. You're being stopped. Because people don't like what you're doing. No one does. At your age, you ought to know that. You, when you do things people don't like, they're not going to like you. And when you're gone, all that goes with you. We don't have, there's no more. It's over. We finally have normal life again. We don't have to watch every fucking weird ass thing people say. I don't have to evaluate. You know, and my ex-husband, you know, uh, call, having him call me and tell him, I can't, uh, I, we got caught on the money laundering, so I, I can't give you any more money. Don't even ask. Um, and, and reads off your lines. Um, you know, okay, duly noted for the record, duly noted for the record, you, you did another thing, so, uh, anyway, uh, you know, here, here, here's how everybody else sees what you're doing. Leave me alone! Please! Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said let me talk to you for two minutes doesn't matter if it's two minutes five minutes 20 minutes if she said no no means no rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude.